This is a video solution for problem 12 from Super Quiz 1. Here we're given a function, 3x squared y minus xy. Man, that's starting to feel like a theme in these problems. And we want to know where it's decreasing, decreasing fastest at the point 1, negative 2, negative 4. Now, we've already seen in one of the previous videos why this negative 4 isn't a typo. Um, so the input, 1, negative 2 into this function results in the output, negative 4. All right, but the real question is, right, at this point, when the input is 1, negative 2, in which direction is this function decreased, decreasing the fastest? And the way we uh, go about solving this, right, is by going back and, and asking, well, how do we find the, the slope or the rate of change in any direction? And the answer is, of course, we take the directional derivative. So when we compute the directional derivative, we'll, we'll specify a direction, uh, although we typically want uh, to specify it using a unit vector. Uh, we don't have to, but eventually when we go to compute uh, <laughs> directional direction, how beautiful is that? All right, why don't we try derivative? There we go. Okay. Uh, what were we saying? Yes, when we go to compute the directional derivative uh, using our gradient formula, we want to use a, a unit vector, uh, or at least at the very end, divide by the length of the, the vector, the direction vector we're given. So the directional derivative, which we denote by fu, which is not meant to be offensive, um, right? At a particular point, in this case, we want one negative two is given by taking the gradient of f at the point 1, negative 2, and then taking the dot product with the vector u. Uh, so uh, if we're trying to determine where this directional derivative is, uh, is going to be the most negative, well, why would we want this to be the most negative? Well, let's go back to the question. We're asking where the function is decreasing the fastest. Okay, so if it's decreasing, the slope better be negative. That's number one. And we want it to be decreasing as fast as possible. So we want this to be an absolute value, the largest number we can come up with. Okay, well, let's look at this dot product in a couple of different ways. First, note we're taking a dot product with a unit vector, right? This is our, our direction vector. We don't know what this direction is yet, right? That's actually what the question is. What direction? Okay. It's a unit vector. I mean, even if it wasn't, we could always normalize it and make it a unit vector. And the gradient points in some direction. Who knows? There's the gradient vector. And because we're taking the dot product with a unit vector, we know that the length of the projection will be exactly the value of the dot product. So this length down here, up to maybe a sign, right, is going to be the length, uh, the, this length is going to be the value of the dot product. So one can see if you take this u and start rotating it up, right, or sort of equivalently rotating the picture so that uh, the, the gradient of f is closer, all right, so maybe we'll draw it a different color. Okay, so maybe the great maybe we rotate the picture so that u always stays flat here, but the the gradient of f right is relatively closer to it. You can see that the projection is going to get longer. All right, so this would result in a larger directional derivative. On the other hand, if we start rotating the u so that it it makes a larger angle with the gradient, so maybe even here like a right angle. Right, so let's say we rotated everything so that this was our picture. Well, then the, the projection is, is nothing at all. Okay, So if we were trying to find the direction where it's not moving at all, this is where we would want to choose our u. Right? We want it to be orthogonal to the gradient. Okay, But we want it to be decreasing. So we don't even want a positive length here. We want a negative length. And so the way we do that is by rotating the u so that it's exactly going in the opposite direction as the gradient. Because if we do that, well now not only is the length going to be something negative, but also it's going to be as large a projection as possible. 
right? I think here we'll do this in a little nice purple or something. Hey, it turns into a blue when you mix them. Pretty. Okay, so that's actually what we want for our U. We want it to be pointing in the exact opposite direction as the gradient vector. And it could be a unit vector or not, right? Like that's not really even the point. Um, we can always normalize it if we have to. So the correct direction, so the, the direction where it's decreasing the fastest, or you could say of steepest descent is negative the gradient at one comma negative two. Okay. Um, alternatively, if you wanted to see this using the geometric definition of the dot product, you would know that this dot product is equal to the length of the gradient times the length of this vector u, which of course that's going to be one, times the cosine of the angle between the gradient at one negative two and u. Okay, now if we want this product to be as small as possible, I mean, the gradient doesn't change. This is a one. The only thing that can change is this cosine. So we want this cosine to be as small as possible, right? Meaning we want it to be a negative number with as large a, uh, an absolute value as possible. Well, that's gonna happen when the cosine is negative one, which means we need this angle to be 180 degrees. That'll make the cosine equal to negative one. So again, we want the unit vector to be pointing 180 degrees away from the gradient vector. Okay, so the only thing left then is to write down the negative of this gradient, and we've already computed that in problem 11. So this is the negative of negative 10 comma two, which is 10 comma negative two. And if you are uh, really interested in making sure you have uh, the unit vector u here, of course you can divide by the length, so uh, if we want to do that, it, it's not necessary for this problem, but if we want to, just for practice, divide by the length. Okay, the length here is going to be, um, let's see, the square root of 10 squared plus negative 2 squared. And let's see, that's 100 plus 4, that'll be root 104. So we'll get 10 over root 104 comma negative 2 over root 104. Okay, so this would be our, our U hat that we want. Okay, but this here, this would be perfectly fine as an answer as well, this 10, negative 2. That's a direction good as any.